Hi, um, I just want to welcome everybody tonight. My name is Jenny Belial, and I'm the Arts and Culture Commission. I am the Arts and Culture Commission of Contra Costa County Managing Director. And before we begin ce celebrating this incredible evening and incredible participants today, the Poetry Out Loud team and I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land and the indigenous people of Contra Costa County. We collectively acknowledge that Contra Costa County resides on the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of indigenous people. Contra Costa and all its participating schools and institutions that support Poetry Out Loud resides on land that was cared for and called home by the Bay Miwok and the Ohlone people who shared their oral traditions in the Utean and Penushun language. Local tribes from our county include, but are not limited to, the Saklon, the Taklon, the Chupkan, the Hulpun, the Volvon, the Sioux Yen, and other native peoples from time immemorial. These lands truly hold great historical, spiritual, and personal significance to its past, present, and future stewards, the native nations and peoples of this region. We truly honor and continue their tradition of cultural and artistic expression in Contra Costa County through our engagement with the arts today. Now let's take a moment to watch this incredible video that Antonio Tony Tamayo, our Poetry Out Loud digital content and technical assistant created, sharing the background of Poetry Out Loud. I truly want to make sure that we share the team that makes Poetry Out Loud a success. And first, I'd like to share the backgrounds of two amazing arts and culture commissioners that have participated in our Contra Costa County judging. The first is, we can roll the key, Chair Ledesma. Chair Ledesma. Can you just share a little bit about your background and your passion for Poetry Out Loud? I'm gonna quickly gonna say that uh, while I spend my early formative years in Mexico, I hang out with poets and uh, it, was, um, it was great. I went to music school, so it was this combination of musicians and poets. Now that I'm here in Contra Costa County, I have been involved with uh, uh, Richmond uh, Poetry, uh, you know, that program that the uh, Richmond Arts and Culture Commission had, and I was participant with that, and uh, I, I've been a judge various times with this County Art Commission, and I really, really encourage the youth in Contra Costa County to participate, to read, to engage, to just create and, and bring out all this expression, body language, um, pub, all, like really express. And at any age, you know, you can start reading or writing poetry. So I'm so happy to see 
that this is the first time we are like really opening up this poetry out loud program. We are enriching it with a poet laureates, youth, young people, very talented and uh, our supported support person here, Mr. DeFranco, who has his well experience in the in this kind of arts. So I I'm just thankful to be among all of you. And I encourage again, Contra Costa County youth in our diverse community to engage. So there's equity and art and expression for the next year and beyond. Thank you so much for being here. Chair Ledesma, we can't thank you so much for your amazing leadership to really make Poetry Out Loud a success. And I'd like to do an amazing welcome to Alinita Mims, a commissioner that I highly respect. And I'm just gonna give her the floor to talk. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, I'm Commissioner Mims. I have been on the Arts Commission for Contra Costa County for almost three years. I enjoy Poetry Out Loud and I really believe in what it stands for. And I really wanna see more youth get involved with the next year, hopefully. I wanna congratulate all of, the, all of the students that have been a huge participant and make this happen. I wanna thank all of the volunteers behind the scenes that make this happen. And I really urge for next year for us to be bigger and better and greater. But tonight is about those who are gonna be performing and those winners. And I just wanna say congratulations and my heart goes out to all of you for just being really intrigued about poetry. Um, I own a, I own Tupperware Entertainment and we do poetry stuff. And I just really love seeing the young people involved. So have a wonderful time with this tonight and I'll be watching. Well, I just came to the job of Arts and Culture Commission, Contra Costa County Managing Director in August, and I've been so inspired by the commissioners, and I'm so happy that Chair Ledesma and Commissioner Mims was able to share their background. Now I'd like to segue to our judges. We were very fortunate this year to have such an incredible depth and talent to judge our Contra Costa County judging which we did, and everything this year has gone virtual for the first time. And I'd like to have a really thank you to the people and the judges for many years who have really dedicated their time to really look and try to support our youth. Our judges this year include Kenny Kahn. And Kenny Kahn is an assistant principal at Monte Vista High School in Danville, California. He's an East Bay native, and Kenny graduated from El Cerrito High School where he taught English and coached football. Kenny is excited to join a group of talented judges and community leaders who support the written and spoken word and looks forward to celebrating the evolving art form of poetry with those called to this space. We also had a judge named Allie Marina, Marini. She is a cross genera writer and tarot reader. She holds degrees from Antioch University of Los Angeles and the New College of Florida. She has so many awards underneath her belt that I can't list them all, but she has been a member of Oakland's 2017 National Slam team and Allie, she considers herself a Florida expat who writes poetry, fiction, essays, and tarot dossiers in the Pacific Northwest where she's usually cold. This year, our accuracy judge was Amy Glenn. And Amy Glenn is an award-winning poet and essayist whose work appears widely in journals, including the American, the best American poetry. She has many awards, many prizes, and she currently serves and lives in Lafayette with her two teenage daughters. And her experience includes being the inaugural poet laureate in the cities of Lafayette and Orinda. 
But I also want to mention a judge that we have is Karen Schneider. Karen has worked with middle and high school students for over 37 years, all in the San Ramon Unified School District. She's been a teacher, counselor, and school administrator. And we were so fortunate to have her as a judge. But I really am excited to introduce our Poetry Out Loud team. And we can't help but start with Tony Tomeo. If you notice how amazing these graphics are, we can thank our Poetry Out Loud team member, Tony Tamayo, who is an incredible photographer. He is a Bay Area native, and we're very fortunate to have him on this team. Now, if we can move to Brennan and Dante, where the fun is going to start in this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Welcome, everybody, to the 2020 Poetry Out Loud Contra Costa County Championship. It is my pleasure to be here and to be presenting all these poems for you. Uh, we have two rounds of poetry tonight. And all of them saw the judge panel and were scored prior to this evening's broadcast. And our, each poet will do two poems, one round for each poet. Our, I'm sorry, one poem in each round and two rounds total. Each of the poets um, were drawn in a random order for each round. So let's get to it. Our first poet in the first round is Tessa Brubaker. Dust by Dorian Lau. Someone spoke to me last night, told me the truth. Just a few words, but I recognized it. I knew I should make myself get up, write it down, but it was late. And I was exhausted from working all day in the garden moving rocks <laughs> now i remember only the flavor not like food sweet or sharp more like a fine powder like dust and i wasn't elated or frightened but simply wrapped aware it's how it is sometimes god comes to your window all bright lights and black wings and you're just too tired to open it wow uh, beautiful performance by, by Tessa Brubaker. Uh, right now, we're going to move on to our next contestant, uh, Kyla Nano. The mask that burns like a violin. The mask that sings only dead languages. That loves the destruction of being put on. The mask that sighs like a woman. Even though a woman where is it? The mask beaded with fresh water pearls, with seeds. The plumed mask, the mask with a citrus mouth, a moon face with a hailed gash that means harvest. A glower that hides wanting. 
a grotesque pucker. Here's a beaked mask, a braided mask. Here's a mask without eyes, a mask that looks like a mask, but isn't. Please, don't try to unrip it. The mask that snows coins. The mask full of wasps. Lace mask to net escaping thoughts. Pass me. The rouged mask, the one made of sheet music, or the jackal mask, the hidebound mask that renders lovers identical with night. Thank you, Kyla. Everybody, please make some noise in your respective chat boxes for Kyla. Coming up next, please welcome Kaylee Thurman. Hi, my name is Kaylee Thurman. I go to College Park High School, and I will be reciting Emily Dickinson at Poetry Slam by Dan Vera. I will tell you why she rarely ventured from her house. It happened like this. One day, she took the train to Boston, made her way to the darkened room, put her name down in cursive script, and waited her turn. When they read her name aloud, she made her way to the stage, straightened the papers in her hands, pages and envelopes, the backs of grocery bills, she closed her eyes for a minute, took a breath, and began. From her mouth, perfect words exploded. Intact formulas of light and darkness. She dared to rhyme with words like cockneal and described the skies like a diadem. Obscurely worded incantations filled the room with an alchemy that made the very molecules quake. The solitary words she handled in her upstairs room with keen precision came rumbling out to make the electric lights flicker. Forty members of the audience were treated for hypertension. Twenty-year-old dark-haired beauties found their heads had turned a Moses white. Her second poem erased the memory of every cell phone in the nightclub. And by the fourth line of the sixth verse, the grandmother in the upstairs apartment had been cured of her rheumatism. The papers reported the power outages. The area hospitals taxed their emergency generators and sirens were heard to wail through the night. Quietly, she made her way to the exit, walked to the terminal, and rode back to Amherst. She never left her room again, and never read such syllables aloud. Everybody snap it up for the poet. Uh, thank you, Kaylee Thurman, for that performance. Uh, up next is our fourth performer, uh, Jermaine Gitana. Type it up. I was born in minutes in a roadside kitchen, a skillet whispering my name. I was born to rain water and lie. 
I was born across the river where I was borrowed with clothespins, a hair or two, broadside soon in my shoes. I return, though it please you, through no fault of my own. Pockets filled with coffee grounds and eggshells. I was born still and superstitious. I bore an unexpected burden. I gave birth. I gave blessing. I gave rise to suspicion. I was born abandoned outdoors in the heat-shaped air. Air drifting like spirits in old windows. I was born a fraction and a cipher and a ledger entry. I was an index of first lines when I was born. I was born a waist deep stubborn in the water crying. Ain't I a woman and a brother? I was born to this hall of mirrors. This horror story I was born with a prologue of references pursued by mosquitoes and thieves. I was born passing off the problem of the 20th century. I was born. I read minds before I could read fishes and loaves. I walked a piece of the way alone before I was born. All right. Thank you very much, Jermaine. Everybody, please make some noise for Jermaine. Coming up next in the first round, everybody, please welcome Patricia May Villanueva. Born Like the Pines by James Ephraim McGirt. Born like the pines to sing the harp and song in my breast. Though far and near, there's none to hear. I'll sing as the winds request to tell the trend of the lay is not for the harp or me. I'm only to know from the winds that blow what the theme of my song shall be. Born like the pines to sing, the harp and the song in my breast. As the winds sweep by, I'll laugh or cry. In the winds, I cannot rest. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Patricia, for that. Uh, right now, we are on our sixth performer. In the first round, give it up for Esmeralda Noyola. We Are Not Responsible by Harriet Mullen. We are not responsible for your lost or stolen relative. We cannot guarantee your safety if you disobey our instructions. We do not endorse the causes or claims of people begging for handouts. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Your ticket does not guarantee that we will honor your reservations. In order to facilitate our procedures, please limit your carrying on. Before taking off, please extinguish all smoldering resentments. If you cannot understand English, you will be moved out of the way. In the event of a loss, you'd better look out for yourself. Your insurance was canceled because we can no longer handle your frightful claims. Our handlers lost your luggage and we are unable to find the key to your legal case. You were detained for interrogation because you fit the profile. You are not presumed to be innocent if the police have reason to suspect you are carrying a concealed wallet. It's not our fault you were born wearing a gang color. It is not our obligation to inform you of your rights. Step aside, please, while our officer inspects your bad attitude. You have no rights we are bound to respect. 
please remain calm or we can't be held responsible for what happens to you. Thank you very much, Esmeralda, for that performance. Coming up next, our last poet in the first round. Please show some support for Michael Miralles. The Farmer by W.D. Earhart. Each day I go into the fields to see what is growing and what remains to be done. It is always the same thing. Nothing is growing. Everything needs to be done. Plow, arrow, disc, water, pray till my bones ache and hands rub blood raw with honest labor. All that grows is a slow and transient intensity of need. I have sown my seed on soil guaranteed by poverty to fail. But I don't complain, except to passerby who asked me why I wore such barren earth. They will not understand me if I stoop to lift a rock and hold it like a child, or laughed, or told him it is their poverty I labor to relieve. For them, I complain. A farmer of dreams knows how to pretend. A farmer dreams, knows what it means to be patient. Each day, I go into the fields. Yes, and that was the end of our first round. Clap it up for every performer, snap it up in the chat. And right now we about to start off our second round with Jermaine Gitana. Show some love. Piano by D. H. Lawrence. Softly, in the dusk, a woman is singing to me, taking me back down the vista of years till I see a child sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings and pressing the small poised feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. In spite of myself, the insidious mastery of song betrays me back till the heart of me weeps to belong to the old Sunday evenings at home with winter outside and hymns in the cozy parlor, the tinkling piano, our guide. So now it is vain for the singer to burst into clamor with the great black piano appassionato. The glamor of childish days is upon me. My manhood is cast down in the flood of remembrance. I weep like a child for the past. Thank you very much, Jermaine. Everybody, please make noise for our performers. Coming up next in the second round, Please welcome to the stage, Esmeralda Noyola. Domestic Situation by Ernest Hilbert. Maybe you've heard about this. Maybe not. A man came home and chucked his girlfriend's cat in the wood chipper. This really happened. Dinner wasn't ready on time. A lot of other little things went wrong. He spat on her father who came out when he learned about it. He also broke her pinky, 
stole her checks and got her sister pregnant. But she stood by him, stood strong through it all because she loved him. She loved him, you see? She actually said that. And then she went and married him. She felt some unique call. Don't try to understand what another person means by love. Don't even bother. Thank you. That was such a powerful piece. Um, thank you for sharing that um, and bringing that to life. Up next, we're moving on to Michael Mir Ayez. Under the Lemon Tree from Marsha De La O. Not rain, but fine mist falls from my lemon tree. A bomb of droplets in green shadow. Six years now, my mother gone to earth. This do light as footsteps of the dead. She often walked out here, craned her neck, considered the fruit, hundreds of globes in their leathery hides, figuring on custard and pudding, meringue and hollandaise. But her plans didn't work out. The tree goes on unseasonably. Lemons fall and fold into earth and begin again. Me, I come here to solve against see. I come to languish, to let the soft burst. Essence of citrus, summers distillate, drift into my face and settle. Water and gold grew in the quiet deeps at the far end of the season. Leaves swallow the body of light and the breath of water brings over. My hands cup each other the way hers did. Thank you so much, Michael, for that performance. Up next, please give it up for Kyla Nano. Hello, my name is Kyla Nano and I'm currently a senior attending Concord High School. The Bookshelf of the God of Infinite Space by Jeffrey Skinner. You would expect an uncountable number, acres and acres of books in rows, like weight or gold bullion, or that the words just appear in the mind, like banner headlines. In fact, there is one shelf holding a modest number, 10 or 12 volumes. No dust jackets because no dust. Covers made of gold or skin or golden skin or creosote or rain-soaked macadam or some mix of salt and glass. You turn the page and mountains rise, clouds drawn by children bubble in the sky. You are 20 again, trying to read a map dissolving in your hands. I say you and mean me say God and mean librarian who 
after long research, offers you a glass of water and an apple. You, grateful to discover your name, a footnote in that book. Wow. Uh, as we keep this thing going, I uh, just want to shout out to every performer, every everyone that's participated in this contestant, all the supporters, um, the family members, et cetera, et cetera. Um, up next, we have Tessa Rubaker. Emily Dickinson at the Poetry Slam by Dan Vera. I'll tell you why she rarely ventured from her house. It happened like this. One day, she took the train to Boston, made her way to the darkened room, put her name down in cursive script, and waited her turn. When they read her name aloud, she made her way to the stage, straightened the papers in her hands, pages, envelopes, the backs of grocery bills. She closed her eyes for a minute, took a breath, and began. From her mouth, Perfect words exploded, intact formulas of light and darkness. She dared to rhyme with words like cock and meal and describe the skies like diadem. Obscurely worded incantations filled the room with an alchemy that made the very molecules quake. The solitary words she handled in her upstairs room with keen precision came rumbling out to make the electric lights flicker. Forty members of the audience were treated for hypertension. Twenty-year-old dark-haired beauties found their heads had turned a Moses white. Her second poem erased the memory of every cell phone in the nightclub. And by the fourth line of the sixth verse, the grandmother in the upstairs apartment had been cured of her rheumatism. The papers reported the power outages, and area hospitals taxed their emergency generators, and sirens were heard to wail through the night. <laughs> Quietly, she made her way to the exit, walked to the terminal, and rode back to Amherst. She never left her room again, and never read such syllables aloud. Thank you very much, Tessa. It is always a privilege to get to spend time with this program and see all of these students shine in their performances. Coming up next in our second round, please welcome to the stage, Patricia May Villanueva. Dirge Without Music by Edna St. Vincent Millay. I am not resigned to the shutting away of loving hearts in the hard ground. So it is, and so it will be, for so it has been. Time out of mind. Into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely, crowned with lilies and with laurel they go. But I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers, into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the indiscriminate dust. Fragment of what you felt, of what you knew. A moment. Praise remains, but the best is lost. The answer's quick and keen. The honest look, the laughter, the love, they are gone. They are gone to feed the roses. Elegant and curled is the blossom. Fragrant is the blossom. I know, but I do not approve. More precious was the light in your eyes and all the roses in the world. Down, 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 into the darkness of the grave. Gently they go, the beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly they go, the intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve, and I am not resigned. Wow. Thank you, Patricia, for that emotional performance, for being engaged in the piece 
as we end our second round of the Poetry Out Loud competition. Please welcome Kaylee Thurman. An Apology for Her Poetry by Duchess of Newcastle, Margaret Cavendish. I language want to dress my fancies in. The hairs uncurled, the garments loose and thin. Had they but silver lace to make them gay, they'd be more accorded than in poor array. Or had they art, would make a better show, but they are plain, yet cleanly go. The world in bravery doth take delight, and glistering shows do more attract sight. And everyone doth honor a rich hood, as if the outside made the inside good. And everyone doth bow and give the place, not for the man's sake, but the silver lace. Let me entreat in my poor book's behalf that all will not adore the golden calf. Consider, pray, gold hath no life therein, and life in nature is the richest thing. Be just, let fancy have the upper place, and then my verses may, perchance, find grace. Thank you very much, Kaylee. That is it. That is the end of the second round. Fiend. So, round of applause to all of our performers. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for sharing your talents with us. It is always, always a good thing. I'm so glad to be a part of this program. And thank you for coming out. Uh, in addition to everyone out there in the ether of the Facebook audience, I would like to also show a special appreciation again to reiterate the gratitude for all of the teachers, all of the coordinators, all of the organizers who make this program possible. This is usually the part of the show where we have all of our teachers stand up in the audience and receive a embarrassing, thunderous round of applause to be heard by the community, to have everybody chime in with their own hands, with their own sound and show their appreciation. So even though we are in social distancing this year, know that that applause still applies. Know that there is somewhere in all of our respective spaces and apartments and homes and houses, everybody is clapping right now for you. Thank you for you. Thank you for making this program possible. So we have had our judge panel and the scores are in. But before we announce the winners, we have a couple of special guests who are going to share with you some of their original poetry. Dante Clark is a Richmond, California native, born to two beautiful parents who have nurtured and raised Dante to cultivate his gifts as an active listener, writer, and performer to be rendered for the service of the community. Dante is a prolific communicator, poet, filmmaker, actor, and lifelong dreamer and visionary through the arts, using body language and voice as instruments to uplift stories of the past and to reimagine the future. Dante will be releasing his second collection of poetry titled Close Caskets, available in stores and online February 21st. So make sure you look for it and get yourself a copy. Please welcome to the stage, Dante Clark. Ah, oh, man, it's been a pleasure being a part of this program. Um, I'm gonna share with y'all a new piece that I had wrote and I hope y'all enjoy it. It's called Lively Seeds. Like lively seeds planted in the blackest of soil. When faced with the darkest of times that stretch forth a season, we too must submit ourselves to the process of proving ground, to submerge in the matter and break open. It's in the peeling out of our shy layers that we extend our reach, to pull from the deep and feed from the richness of our roots. 
that has already absorbed the salvation of rainy days that sipped on the early dew in the holy breeze and grabbed onto the warm smiles of summer sky. It's in the burial, the trial, and resurrecting anew do we stem to branch off and bear fruit. What we are is the nature of things. Who we are is what we give to water. One must be a living spring to shine. One must be bursting with light to strengthen. One must tear down the inward parts and taste the sweat of moving mountains, breaking chains and untying dead habits from the heart with fattening the bones with mirth is to stir up in prayer or be a lifting voice like trumpet that gathered the wind into a sweet breath, tickling the leaves and coils of our precious crown during the graceful footsteps at noon in the lively sway at sunset. We know that togetherness is how we thrive. Our lively seeds is how we flourish. Thank y'all for allowing me to be a part of this poetry out loud family. Um, I, I hope y'all enjoyed the night and all of the performers. But we have one more performer before we get done with this. Um, we're gonna we're gonna bring up Brennan DeFrisco. He is a poet, teaching artist, editor, grant writer, and arts coordinator from the Bay Area. He's been a National Poetry Slam finalist, a Push Cart Prize nominee, and 2017 champion of Oakland Poetry Slam. He teaches poetry and performance workshops through California Poets, Poetry Out Loud, Young Audiences, and other arts organizations, school, serving schools, community centers, incarcerated youth, and virtual classrooms across the Bay Area. He holds an MFA in creative writing from Antioch University, Los Angeles. Please give it up for our last performer of the evening, Brennan DeFrisco. Thank you very much, Dante. Uh, it has been a pleasure doing this program with you. Thank you for you. Uh, I brought a poem today specifically because I've thought about the last time I've been in a room with people as an audience since we've been in the year we've been in. And one of the things I like to do at shows is I'll go around and I'll ask people a, a simple question and take down their answers. Everybody comes up with something different. And this is one of the poems that I've constructed in collecting the answers from the people around me. And when I looked at this poem and chose it for tonight, it especially struck me that most of these things are things that are still available to us, even though we are not in the same room together. So this is a found poem by the last show that I was in where all of us were sharing space in the room. And this is called A Collection of Small Joys. Last night's sunset and its fuchsia clouds, the light when dusk reaches the edge of the sky, a galaxy of colors in an open field, a boom box attached to a bike, blasting 80 synth pop down the district. Not the French bulldog's neediness, but its nose. A ceramic showroom of art. The shape of a tree I'd love to bring home. The look on my boss's face, realizing how much work I did now that I'm leaving. Approaching the ocean in a joyful, gallivanting run getting off a six hour flight to see my sister on the other side, reminiscing the memory of San Francisco, a stranger handing me a small pink flower picked fresh from the pavement. My roommate bought me cauliflower rice and it's waiting for me at home. The sun trapped in the Golden Gates arches, listening to Frank Ocean for the first time driving from the In-N-Out drive through to the Krispy Kreme drive through collaborating on making new sound waves, a fantastic bite where the ice cream meets the cone, a priest dancing to Lizzo at the Castro Fair, a free chocolate chip cookie with sea salt, my solar return, a flood of joy celebrating my birth, sitting outside in the sun, running through the park and it's late afternoon. My newborn niece gets the hiccups, 
riding up to see my friends in other cities, swimming between the beach and beyond. And yes, writing this poem for you is a small joy. Thank y'all very much for having us. Thank you very much for coming out for the program. Um, we have uh, we have Jenny to go to. So thank y'all for having me and Dante. Thank you for you. I first off just want to say thank you to all the Contra Costa County youth, Dante and Brennan for sharing your brilliance and wisdom with us. It's truly a gift and I can't thank you so much. Well, you know what time it is, right? It's award time, woo -hoo! I know you've been waiting all night and you're like, when is this gonna happen? <laughs> but we have to thank friends of AC5 for having the checkbook, writing those checks for the awards and the prizes. So I'm throwing this right back to you, Brennan. Brennan and Dante get to have fun making the announcements. All right, folks. Just to just to say before we announce the prizes, we recognize how much work and effort goes into these performances and to make it this far. All of you are champions of your school. All of you are champions of our heart. Please know that. In third place, winning a prize of $100, please give it up for Tessa Brubaker. In second place, Esmeralda Noyola. And in first place, winning a $200 prize, a special jacket custom made for recognizing their championship, representing Contra Costa County at the California State Competition and the 2021 champion of our county competition. Please give it up for Jermaine Gitana. Congratulations, everybody. The state finals are going to be on March 11th. So please make sure to tune in and see how our county champion goes against the other counties of California. Now we'll go to you, Jenny. Well, this has been such a great and exciting evening and congratulations to our winners. I first wanna just do a couple quick final closing remarks. The Arts and Culture Commission would first like to thank the California Arts Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Poetry Foundation for making this event possible. Without that funding and support, you know, it wouldn't happen, but we would make it happen. I also wanna thank the two, send so much thanks to the commissioners, in the county administrator's office for their enthusiastic support for this program. And thank you, you judges, for that time commitment. And thank you to the amazing Poetry Out Loud team of Brennan, Dante, and Tony. Are you kidding me? Despite this program going virtual for the first time due to the pandemic, they didn't let that be an obstacle. They really came through for supporting our youth for Contra Costa County. And thank you again, friends of AC5. And thank you, the CCTV team of Chris, Elena, and Christina. Thank you to the ASL interpreters, Cheryl and Brent. But most of all, thank you, school administrators, educators, and amazing students. Okay. Every Contra Costa County high school, public, private, 
independent, alternative, core charter and home schools, along with nonprofit organizations and libraries can participate in Poetry Out Loud. So please check out our website, www.ac5.org for more information. We wanna see you here next year. Thank you.